Hello again everyone, welcome to part two. So, you know that you can't upgrade everybody and everything, so how do you decide what you're going to take? Well, first of all, you're going to look at the class. You're going to know what class of survivors you use more frequently than others. I know, for example, that I like to do Guild Wars, and a class that is absolutely essential in survivor versus survivor battles are shooters. So I know that I'm going to want sort of an A-team of shooters, and I'm going to want some reserves because I use them a lot. Same with hunters. However, for every class that you've got, I recommend having at least two of each uh, upgraded. Even if you don't tend to use, say, warriors or bruisers that often, you might find that they can be useful in certain situations. If there's a problem that you can't deal with, swap out the class, try something different. You never know, it might surprise you. I've definitely found bruisers, warriors and scouts very useful when I am tackling uh, enemies that are sort of 8, 9, 10 levels above my guys. Bruisers take damage, my warriors are equipped with a chainsaw and have certain skills that are very useful. So don't neglect any of your classes. For each class, I suggest having one civvy. So this is a non-character from the show. The reason for this is because generic class tokens are much easier to come across than specific hero ones, and they can be used on anyone. So it becomes very easy to upgrade your traits and upgrade your star level. That's something else that you want to look at as well. Your star level can be quite important. It gives you a slight boost to your damage and to your resilience. And it also means that you can take on tougher levels before body shots become a lot more prevalent. That's why taking on much higher enemies is such a challenge. And why you really have to think about it is because body shots, you know, anti-criticals basically, become so prevalent. So when you're selecting who to take... I suggest, let's say if you like shooters, have four of them. Have four of them ready because I'm probably going to take two on each mission. If it's Guild Wars and, and most of the challenge missions, they're going to get injured. And I might want to keep on going. It's no good just having a trio of survivors who you always use upgraded while everyone else is, you know, significantly lower. Because... Well, what happens if you have a misclick or you just happen to get injured? You're going to be booted out of the game. So I, I would suggest having four of your two favorite classes available and at least two of every other class. Again, you don't know when they're going to come in. You want to be looking at traits. So that's the class type and the star level that they're at. You're also going to want to look at leadership traits if they're a named character, and the actual traits that they have, because some are better than others. I this is a lot of this is personal opinion. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Tara, for example, so that I can come out of tough missions without any damage by using her he her healing charge ability. Really like Rick's skill, you know, and so on. Maggie, great for harvesting XP. Glenn. Great for uh, gaining supplies, which are hard to come by. But you're going to basically be able to know who you want um, to take with you based on that. Just a brief word on traits. I personally find lucky to be absolutely great. Um, ruthless to be virtually essential on your favorites. Because charge attacks become much more important as you take on higher level opponents. Once everyone's got to gold, all their traits will be unlocked. Before that, they get unlocked sequentially. If a survivor doesn't have the ideal traits, then what you can do is re-roll them. So this means that you use a certain number of re-roll tokens plus a number of character tokens... And then you can replace an undesirable trait with a choice of one of two that the game gives you. This is very useful because some traits, like say bullet dodge, they are so circumstantial that they're virtually useless. 
I might well want to replace Bullet Dodge with something more useful like Ruthless. Reroll tokens are hard to come by, so you're going to want to think carefully about who you use and what traits you might want to replace. So that's the survivors. Consider their traits, consider their star level, consider their class, and decide who you're going to want to take to the next level. Now, gear. This is similar in a lot of ways. You um, can unlock traits, similar to the way that uh, hero tokens do, but this time you just use pure XP. You can't upgrade every single weapon, but you're going to know what you like, as long as it's gold. As long as your gear is gold, weapons or armor, it's probably going to be enough. If it has maybe just one or two undesirable traits, then I suggest buying another piece of gold gear of that type from the trade shop or elsewhere. However, don't get too hooked up on trying to get the perfect gear. As long as it's gold and it's fully upgraded, it should be good. Traits that you're going to want to look for are ruthless. Stun resistance is, is very useful. Um, where is it? Fireproof is especially good. But also have a think about who your equipment is equipped on. If we look at armor, things like fireproof, so that you have fewer body shots, stun resistant and dodge, that kind of thing is going to be great on a bruiser. On a damage dealer, you're going to want things like ruthless. Uh, maybe dodge, because you're going to find yourself in close combat quite often. So think about those kinds of things. Now, you can upgrade your equipment to three levels above your survivor level. So my survivor is level 25. You can see this gear is level 28. As you upgrade it, you unlock traits, which can be very useful. Something else which is worth noting, look at the level of this butterfly knife, level 18 plus 10. I've upgraded it 10 times using upgrade tokens. These are reinforcement tokens, sorry. These are a little hard to come by, but absolutely invaluable. It means that if you have a piece of equipment that you particularly like, you don't have to abandon it as soon as you have leveled up a couple of times. You can keep it with you. It also makes upgrading these weapons very quick. Instead of upgrading it from scratch and having to unlock the traits one at a time, and getting it up to three levels above your survivor, all you do is you upgrade it once using the XP and using the reinforcement tokens, and that is a much, much quicker way of doing it. All of the traits are unlocked. So I strongly recommend that during the game, whenever you can get reinforcement tokens, you use that on a favorite piece of armor that you have or a favorite weapon, and you keep that with you. I, for example, have left behind Festive Lucille, this wonderful bruiser weapon, but... I might well use my reinforcement tokens on Morgan's staff, you know, or the Spiked Kingdom Shield, just because they are so great. Again, you can't upgrade everything, but I recommend having at least two weapons for each class, because you never know when you're going to rely on them.